In this video, you're going to learn to recognize the lie of perceived danger that can trigger the body's fear response when you're actually safe. You're going to learn how to soothe your nervous system, and I'm going to show you some really practical activities that you can do to feel safe when you are safe, even when your mind lies and tells you that you're not. In this section, the exercises are really important. This section is experiential. It's about the experience of doing these exercises, not just thinking about the concepts I tell you. So make sure not to skip the exercises. I love making mental health content, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of work. So my average 15 minute video takes me between 20 and 30 hours to produce. So I just wouldn't be able to do this and put them for free on YouTube without my sponsors. This video is sponsored by Carvana, a company revolutionizing how we sell our cars. Have you thought about what your current car is worth, but you've been unsure where to start? Forget the hassles of trying to figure out on your own and don't waste your time going to a car dealership and dealing with salespeople to get an offer. Carvana makes it super simple to find out how much your car is worth. All you have to do is enter your license plate or VIN number. And you might be surprised, used car prices are at an all-time high right now. Unlike other sites, this isn't an estimate. The offer you get back is a real, firm offer that Carvana will buy your car for. So if you choose to accept the offer, Carvana will come to you and do a quick review of your car at your home, and then they'll cut you a check on the spot. You can do this all 100% online without ever having to talk to a used car salesman. It only takes two minutes. Go to getcarvana.com slash therapy in a nutshell to get started. You can see what your offer is or you can choose to actually sell your car. It's up to you. Carvana won't pester you to do anything. Carvana has purchased more than 200,000 cars from customers. So to join these customers, click the link in my description and get your free quote in just two minutes today. I'm gonna share a story directly from the worry solution, right? Let me invite you to do a simple experiment to see how your imagination can influence the way you feel. Make sure you're in a safe, comfortable place where you can close your eyes for a few minutes. Focus on your body as if your attention were a radar or sonar beam slowly scanning up and down. And notice if you feel any stress, tension, or discomfort anywhere in your body. Now let's rate it on a scale of zero to 10, where zero is no tension and 10 is all the tension you could stand. Where would you rate the tension level in your body right now? Now, imagine that you are camping in the woods. In the middle of the night, you need to go to the bathroom. So you throw some clothes on and you shuffle off so that you won't disturb anyone else. It's completely dark with no moon and it takes you a while to find a level place, but you're finally able to do what you need to do. The need attended to, you notice how really dark it is, and you start to carefully pick your way back to camp, reaching out with your arms so that you don't bump into anything. You trip over tree roots and rocks, you pick up a few scratches from unseen branches. After a while, you feel that you've been walking too long, and you should have found your campsite already. It's cold, and it's dark, and you're kind of uncomfortable. You start walking in another direction, and then, after a while, another. And then you realize that you are lost. You quietly call out several times, but nobody answers. Finally, you yell loudly, but you still get no response. The night is even darker and colder, and you feel very alone. As you wonder what to do next, the background noises of the forest suddenly go strangely quiet. You hear something moving in the brush nearby. It sounds like something big and it's headed toward you. Now, stop for a minute and rescan your body. Where would you rank your tension level now on that zero to 10 scale? Now, imagine that from the direction of the breaking twigs, you hear your good friend call out your name. It's not a bear, you are safe. Notice if your tension goes away immediately or if there's some after effect that lingers for a little while. The author says, I apologize for scaring you, but the point is that if you did get tense or scared, it's because you have a good imagination and you can see how intimately it is connected to your body. 
When we believe we are in danger, but are actually safe, our body and our mind create the same physical anxiety reaction as if we were in physical danger. Our brain signals to our body to pump out adrenaline and trigger that fight, flight, freeze response. We do it so much we don't even notice that we're doing it. Okay, take five minutes right now, pull out a piece of paper and answer this question. Are you 100% safe right now? Go ahead and set a five minute timer. When I was asked this in a workshop, initially I was like, yeah, I'm safe. But then as I took the time, I thought, well, any of these people could attack me. There could be an earthquake, a fire. Heck, I might have cancer or a parasite that could kill me shortly. You know, pretty soon my mind was creating all of these ways that I could be in danger. The other people in the workshop came up with similar responses. The answer was no, I'm not safe. There are so many things that could kill us at any moment. The presenter simply asked us afterwards, did I ask you if you were safe in the future or safe in the now? All of those dangers that I thought of were not happening right now. My sense of fear created them in my mind. These were not actual threats, they were perceived threats. Dangers that our minds can imagine, but which our bodies cannot escape. We can't fight them off physically because they're not real their imagined danger, right? This creates a stuck feeling of anxiety. Anxiety disorders and PTSD are essentially when our minds convince our bodies that we're in danger when we're actually safe. We see danger in our jobs, in our commutes, and when we read the news. Unlike animals, our powerful brains can see danger in the future, which our body reacts to in the present moment. This makes us rush about our days flustered and stressed, thinking that it's normal to be constantly anxious. We may notice the stress, but be unaware of the cause. Even sedentary jobs leave us exhausted because our bodies are running a stress marathon during the day, which includes an elevated heart rate, fast breathing, and high blood pressure. When we're chronically stressed, it actually does not help us stay safe. It decreases productivity. Chronic stress makes us sick, it inhibits thinking, and it distorts our perceptions of the world. Even in a fight, if you're super freaked out and super stressed out, you're probably not gonna be as effective at this fight as if you were calm and composed. Calm action, intentional action, is more likely to keep us safe and healthy. So do you do this? Do you, do you bring to mind scary things that could happen or might happen, but there's no action you can take? Sometimes I do, but after this workshop, I was able to give this a name. This is called perceived danger. So how has your stress response, which is supposed to help you perform, gotten in the way of you being productive? You can write this in the workbook, or if you're on YouTube, write this in the comment section. We can heal from anxiety and fear when we create perceived safety, noticing that we are actually safe in the here and now. Remember, our nervous system has two states, the sympathetic response, the fight, flight, freeze response, and the parasympathetic response, the rest and digest response. We strengthen the part that we use the most. So to create safety and calm, we need to foster a parasympathetically dominant nervous system, a calm nervous system. And we do this on a physical level in two ways. Number one is creating safety in our mind, changing how we perceive situations. And number two is creating safety in our body, changing our body's physical response to situations through a body up approach. Now we've already talked about creating safety in the body through self-regulation. In this video, you're learning how to change how you think about situations. When you change the way you think, you change your body's reaction. So the first thing that you've learned is to notice when you think you're in danger, but you're actually safe. Now let's move on to the next exercise. Take three minutes and write down the things that cause you stress. Go ahead, set a three minute timer. Make sure and do this exercise. Now look at those items again. We generally don't realize it, but the reason that outside circumstances are linked with a stress response is because of our interpretation that they're a threat to our physical safety. So how are you seeing the things on your list as a threat? You have the situation and the response and insert in the middle your interpretation. So the situation might be something like your boss gives you feedback and the response is feeling a pit in your stomach anger or on the verge of tears. So for example, when you have a job evaluation, what is the interpretation in the middle that makes my brain set off that fight, flight, freeze response, right? That stress or anger response or that pit in your stomach, right? 
it could be the perceived threat, the fear that I could lose my job, then I'd run out of money and starve to death. This is an example of thinking, even subconscious thinking, that we're in danger when in reality we're quite safe. We often usually don't notice that we're thinking this way, but if we want to regulate our emotions, we need to go back to the steps of emotion processing, right? So we notice this is a danger response. Then we explore, what am I seeing as dangerous? And then we choose to act one or more of the following, right? We change our perception or we change our bodily reaction or we take action. So if we change the perception, we think, well, my boss isn't going to fire me. I'm overreacting. I'm safe. I'm okay or we change our bodily reaction, right? We practice calming down the nervous system or we take action to solve the problem. Like, oh, maybe I wasn't turning in reports on time, so now I'll make sure to do that. Let me give you another example, right? Something that causes my husband a lot of stress is when my children make a lot of noise. We're all working from home during this crazy pandemic, right? And um, every time the kids scream, whether they're happy or mad, it triggers that stress response in him. Sometimes it feels like anger. Sometimes it feels like um, anger. <laughs> so what's the interpretation in the middle of that? What's the interpretation in the middle of that that contributes to that stress response? Well, if you hear your kids screaming, you might be afraid that they're getting hurt or you might be afraid that they're hurting someone else, or you might be afraid that they're interfering your ability to work. And if they're interfering your ability to work, then you're not gonna be able to make money, then you're not gonna have food, then you're gonna starve to death, right? See how all of these are danger responses? Same thing goes with like something as simple as um, rejection from a group, right? Like if you get really emotional and upset, like if you're in a friend group and they leave you out. I see this all the time with teenage girls, right? They're really upset because their friends aren't including them. Why is this triggering such a strong emotional reaction? The situation is being rejected. The emotional reaction is like, oh my gosh, sadness, fear, anxiety, jealousy, right? What's the interpretation in the middle? Well, our brain interprets social rejection as being a threat to our life because our ancient brain knows that we needed our village to survive. We needed our village and our people so that we didn't get kicked out, rejected from our village and left alone in the woods to starve to death. Our deep brain sees danger all the time, even when we're actually safe. Now, remember name it to tame it. When we don't acknowledge that we're having a danger response, we feel like it's out of our control. When we name it, we can do something about it. So saying the words like danger and safe give us the power to clarify the situation and our responses. We can create perceived safety to pair with actual safety by actively exercising our mind to challenge these interpretations. So saying things like, I am okay, I am safe, or he's just asking me to make a small change, or even if he does fire me, which is not likely, I will not starve to death. I'll just find another job. I'm safe. Saying things like this can be helpful in challenging those thoughts. So here's another way to think about our anxiety response that can help you soothe fear and anxiety. Why do you think our survival instincts are triggered by things like peer rejection or our jobs? Because ancient people would have starved to death if something went wrong with their job or if they were kicked out of the tribe. One of the things we can do when we're feeling freaked out is to ask ourselves, does this situation really present a threat to my survival? If I don't get this report in, am I actually going to die of starvation? If I get turned down by my crush, will I be kicked out of the tribe and have to wander the wilderness alone? Reminding our minds and bodies that we are safe will help us calm down. And most likely this is gonna help us do a better job on the report or keep our voice steady when we ask that guy out. So take a minute to identify one stressor and ask the question, where is the survival fear here? Is this a valid fear? We're not dependent on our circumstance to feel safe. We create emotional safety within ourselves through integrity. We create emotional safety in our relationships through consistency and compassion. We create physical safety through our perception and our actions as needed. Now, let's just do a quick side note on actual danger. If you are in a situation of actual danger, like for example, if you're in an abusive relationship or if you are on the verge of starving to death or if you have someone threatening your life, then it's not gonna be that helpful to try and you know, change your perception or to decrease your anxiety with these skills. It's not safe the situation you're in and it won't work because it's not truthful to say, I am safe when you're not safe. So instead, focus on creating safety through action, like getting yourself out of that situation. 
in actual danger, it can also be beneficial to practice calm in your body to help you make better choices and take action. So by planting, watering, and fostering these seeds of safe thoughts and sensations and activities, and by focusing on the present moment, we actually exercise our parasympathetic nervous system and develop self-regulatory neural pathways in the same way that an athlete would develop muscles. So in summary, chronic stress and even getting momentarily flustered, overwhelmed, or anxious are about perceived threats. If you get really uptight in meetings at work, or you bristle when you're receiving feedback, or if you experience PTSD symptoms, or if you just get flustered while making dinner for guests, then you can benefit from understanding the difference between perceived danger and actual safety. When we believe that we're in danger, our body and mind create the same physical anxiety reaction as if we were in actual physical danger. This keeps us stuck in the fight, flight, freeze response. How we think about things, how we interpret our situation, this creates a sense of calm or of stress depending on how we think. So you can foster a calm mind and a nervous system by noticing that you feel in danger when you're actually safe, questioning your interpretation of events, asking, am I actually in physical danger right now? If the answer is no, then it's best to regulate your nervous system by bringing to mind the perception of safety, creating that felt sense of safety. So you say, this feels dangerous, but I'm actually safe. Then you soothe your body. You do some deep breathing or some stretching or whatever it is that calms you down. Now, I really encourage you to do the next two activities because when you do them, you're gonna feel a shift in your body, a shift to calm when you do it. These two activities are drawing safety and creating lists of safe things. Now, just like I showed you in the beginning of this section, how when we imagine ourselves as being in danger, like in that camping story, we create that danger response in our bodies. When we do these activities that are linked right here, we can actively counteract the negative effects of anxiety by bringing to mind the feeling and the thoughts of safety, by imagining ourselves as being safe when we're actually safe. We reaffirm that right here in the present moment, we're okay. We can actively counteract the negative effects of anxiety by reaffirming that we are actually safe right here in the present moment. Thank you for watching and take care. This video is one skill from my 30 skill course, How to Process Your Emotions, where I teach 30 of the most essential skills for resolving depression, anxiety, and improving mental health. Emotion processing is an essential skill for working through intense emotions, but most people have never been taught how to do it. I'm putting every single main video lesson on YouTube for the world to access for free. You watching these videos, sharing them, contributing to my Patreon, and my sponsors make this possible. If you would like to access the entire course in one place, ad-free, with its workbook, exercises, downloads, extra videos, live Q&As, additional short readings, and links to extended resources, the link to buy the course is in the description below.